Hello everyone, welcome to the video. As you saw in the title, today I will be exploring an old ghost town in search of bottles, cans, and any other cool things I find. Welcome to the video. In 1902, Mr. and Mrs. Parkhurst bought land on the northeast side of Green Lake. They may have operated a small sawmill, although there's some conflicting evidence and we're not quite sure. What is clear is that at some point before 1926, Mr. Parkhurst passed away and following his death, Mrs. Parkhurst sold the acreage. The Barr Brothers Logging Company, run by Ross, William, and Malcolm Barr, then located near Mission, B.C., ran out of timbers in the 1920s. The Bars bought 11 acres for $2,500 from Mrs. Parkhurst in 1926. The section of land bordering the lake was a perfect location for a steam-operated mill. After the logs were cut, they were dumped into the lake and then towed by boat to the mill. Unfortunately, in 1928, Malcolm, the oldest of the brothers, drowned after falling off the boat into the glacial waters of Green Lake. The mill had three crews. It was seasonal work because the snow forced the mill to close for winter months. Most workers came from Vancouver. They stayed in temporary bunkhouses. The Bar's Parkhurst Mill grew into a very successful business, with lumber shipped to Ontario, Quebec, and Nova Scotia. In one year, the mill gave more business to the Pacific Great Eastern Railway than any other stop on the line. However, when the Great Depression hit, the Barr brothers could no longer sell their lumber for enough to cover the cost of freighting, and the business went to receivership in 1930. In 1932, the operation was bought by Byron Smith and B.C. Keeley and renamed Northern Mills. The mill was reopened in 1933 with steady business up until 1938. In 1938, a spectacular fire burnt the mill to the ground. Northern Mills moved locations to the neighboring Lakeside Forest. That mill was fairly short-lived, and the operation was rebuilt at the original location. The exact return date is unclear, but it is sometime between 1941 and 1948. The mill operated until the 1950s, when it was found to have outlived its usefulness, and the mill itself was dismantled. Alright everyone, we have arrived. This is the main site here. It's mostly just collapsed wood in the old building cellar here. But there's a couple dumb sites and a couple more buildings that we'll get to. So, yeah. See what we can find. The site we were just at is over there where the collapsed buildings are. And here is a hill. And on the hill, there's lots of old cans and jars and glass bottles. So we're going to dig through it. This is the first site. We'll see if we can find anything. So you guys can see there's tons of cans here. There's so many cans everywhere. And I just noticed this here. It looks like cast iron stove, maybe? A door to one? Oh, look at that. That's awesome. This is the hill here. So many cans, hundreds of them. But there's not too much here. So we're gonna move on to another site and show you if we find anything there. A couple more things here. There was this little bottle, the top to a Coke, lots of teacups, um, some cans, nice plate, a uh, Serto bottle, that's nice. And this little piece, this is pretty neat. I'll clean it up, see if it's anything nice. We've reached site two here. There's a lot of stuff. You can see other people have been here. It's already looted, but I still think there's lots of potential here. And see if we can find anything nice here. The other spot wasn't as good. We're digging here in this trench and we saw some green. We're hoping it's a soda bottle. So I'll pull it. Oh, it's unmarked. That's too bad. We just dug up a Coke bottle. 
So that's our first good find. And the year is 49. It's a nice starting find. I'll take that. There's a dream model here. Might be just a slick. Ah, it is. Hoping we find a seven up soon. I want to show you guys this Lucky Strike orange soda I found. It's a nice can. I'm going to try and clean it up. It could turn out really well. I also found this bottle here. It's amber. It says Warner on the top. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's kind of neat. Update on some of the finds here. Lots of small ones. There's a fork. Small bottles. I found another orange soda. So I have two of them now. That's nice. A little deodorant bottle. A little perfume. A couple more things. This intact little plate. It's completely intact. I don't know why they threw it out. And this almost intact one. And then this cool tube of burn treatment. And the cool thing is, is that it's still full. I took off the lid and it's actually still in there. So... There's some interesting stuff coming out of this hole. Uh, nothing too old yet, but I'm hoping to find something from the 20s. Okay, Little update on some stuff. Take a look at this. Best wide mouth. So a little mason jar lid. And then this thing. This thing's tiny. That's very cute. I'm definitely going to keep that. Then we have a green little jar. They're not always green. And uh, I think there might be some label on it. I'm not too sure. And then just a little clear bottle with the cork. Or the cap. So, a couple little finds. It's good for now. There's lots of broken buildings here, rotting in the ground. Uh, not much to explore here. It's all rotting, but uh, yeah, just thought I would show you guys. Check out this old car. I believe it might be a truck. It's, there's nothing left of it really, just the metal. And some tires, surprisingly. It's been graffitied over the years. That's still really cool though. There's another truck here. This one's built more out of wood. It's probably a bit older. Still, it's pretty neat. Over here, there's tons more of these old building frames. Here's a bunch of them on the side of this hill. Not really much to them, but they're neat. Found a couple more things. Here's an old iron, an old orange Lucky Strike, local to Vancouver, and a nice little razor in decent condition. I think this one will clean up really well. Definitely a good find. So we're probably gonna head out of this spot uh, yeah. I just saw a piece of glass and I pulled it out and it's this massive jug here. How funny is that? This thing's huge. Come across lots more building ruins here. They're all over the place. This right here is the one last 
building standing at this ghost town. It's been heavily graffitied and it's bored, but it's still very neat to check it out. I'll take you guys inside. There's this main room. And there's a side room over here with some paneling. So I think this could have been the kitchen maybe. Lots of windows. Then there was this room. It's a very neat spot. And then I'll take you guys over here through the bushes. The old outhouse bit teetered to the side. How cool is this spot? We are done for today. This is the adventure of the ghost town. Thank you for watching. See you in another one. Hello again. I'm here now to demonstrate to you guys what one of these finds looks like. So this tube, still partially full, is labeled burn treatment. And the coolest thing is, is that all this time, it still works perfectly well. It's still in there. And as you can see from my demonstration here, this is, the petroleum jelly is still functional. I haven't found anything like this. The tubes are almost always empty or deteriorated, but this one, this one's quite intact. This is a brand from Vancouver and how cool is this? This is most likely 40s or 50s, so that's 70, 80 years old. And here it is, still working. So just thought I would give you guys a little demonstration. How cool is that?